So looking at the cell cycle, just sort of to backtrack and sort of take a step back and see where we are. We completed interphase to start our cell cycle journey, which included G1, which was a growth phase, then S phase, which was the synthesis phase, and then another growth phase called G2. And now in the past two or three videos, we've talked about mitosis, and that is a part of the M phase. And mitosis was all about splitting the daughter nuclei, making sure that there is a, the exact amount of genetic information equally distributed amongst two daughter nuclei. That was our end result at the end of telophase. Now it's time to literally split the cell. And that process of literally splitting the cell once the two daughter nuclei have formed is called cytokinesis. So we're going to entitle this next flowchart cytokinesis. And this just literally means cell splitting or cytoplasm splitting specifically. So this is going to be the idea in which we have the cytoplasm dividing. So we say the cytoplasm divides and if we divide the cytoplasm, if you remember from the cell biology lecture, the one that was about cell structure, we said that the cytoplasm is simply the real estate of the cell. And if the real estate divides equally, then we've created two separate entities, two separate areas at which we have action, at which we have cellular function and cellular structure. So when we cytoplasm, when we divide the cytoplasm, we undergo cytokinesis. This is going to end up with two daughter cells. We can finally say daughter cells now. Before in telophase, we ended up with what? Two daughter nuclei. Now we end up with two daughter cells with um, their own nucleuses or nuclei, with their own nuclei. So once we have those two daughter cells, we actually also have um, uh, lots of organelles. Because you might be wondering, what about the organelles? We, we've only talked about nucleus. Um, we actually have lots of organelles split amongst these two daughter cells and what actually happens um, is pretty interesting. Between these organelles we actually randomly sort out enough so we'll say randomly sort out enough organelles let's say for each. Each daughter cell will uh, probably randomly get um, a certain amount of organelles that will be enough for function. But what's not random, there's actually an exception to this randomness that happens. There's a big exception, and that exception um, is the centrosome. The exception would be actually the centrioles specifically. The cell, no matter what, whenever it undergoes cytokinesis, it will randomly sort of sort out the organelles um, that are going to be given to each cell, each daughter cell, um, amongst the nuclei, uh, in addition to the nucleus. But what's going to be always, always, always non-random and always, always done specifically like this, we're going to mention that it's not random, is the distribution of the centrioles. The centrioles are not going to be randomly distributed. Each cell always gets one pair. Each cell gets one pair. So that shows you the importance of the centrioles. Remember, the centrioles was that right angle structure of two cylinders that look sort of like this, that create, um, that overall mean a centrosome. So the centrioles are the exception to the rule that you randomly sort out enough organelles for each cell to survive. The centrioles are always, always, always given one pair to one daughter cell and the other pair to the other daughter cell. And then finally, what's going to happen at the end result of this, you actually return and begin the next cycle. The nucleus, specifically, um, goes back to interface. Because again, interphase was all about growth, was all about um, developing and sort of uh, preparing for mitosis, and that's what the cell is going to do. It's just going to start the cycle over again, because we've completed the cell cycle. We've gone from interphase to the M phase. The M phase consisted of mitosis, and now we finally split the cell completely into two identical daughter cells, two daughter cells that are independent, that have the organelles necessary for function, and have identical genetic material in each based off of what we just saw in mitosis. So that is the end of our, let's say, story on uh, the cell actually splitting. But let's actually apply this information um, to two different types of cells. If we actually look at animal cells and also plant cells, there are two different sort of um, ways that these both undergo cytokinesis. So we'll say plant cells. There are two separate um, sort of stories to the overall structure, overall process of cytokinesis. Animal cells undergo cytokinesis, but when they undergo cytokinesis, we actually call it a cleavage. So cytokinesis literally means um, cleavage. 
cell cleavage would create uh, would be the idea of cytokinesis, and that means that if you whenever you hear the term cell cleavage, you're always automatically going to say that that's happening in an animal cell because it's specific to animal cells cleavaging. What happens is that um, the cell actually develops a cleavage furrow. That's what we call it. It's called a cleavage furrow. And when we develop a cleavage furrow, what's going to happen is now we're actually going to form a contractile ring. Contractile, um, that's an L, contractile ring forms. What did we say was not contraction? The movement of the microtubules is not contraction. It was depolymerization. It was taking away subunits to get a smaller and smaller, smaller, smaller microtubule. This is the opposite. This actually is contractile in nature. And what we mean by contractile is that we're actually utilizing things like actin and myosin. Those are two proteins that are very good contractile proteins that are going to cause this cleavage furrow to develop. What we then have because of this is, of course, contraction. And when we have contraction, we're actually literally going to have the parent cell divide. Parent cell is actually going to be pinched, so much so that it, it, it pinches itself into two separate cells. What I mean by a cleavage furrow is simply this. So imagine we have um, this type of structure. This is the idea of cytokinesis in an animal cell. We have an independent nucleus here with some chromosomes, some chromatin actually, conde decondensed in a very wild format. We have some over here as well. This right here is going to be the point at which we have a clear cleavage furrow, cleavage furrow right here. This is the cell going to be splitting. This is the cleavage furrow specifically. And what we're going to do is we're going to contract. And when we contract, we literally cause these two split apart. They're going to split apart and turn into two separate cells that are going to go into their own, um, let's say, whatever. They're going to go into their own interface and their separate interfaces, but have the same exact genetic material. That's simply what we mean by what happens in animal cells. Animal cells undergo cleavage. Cell cleavage is basically a way to say cell cytokinesis in animal cells via the development of a cleavage furrow, via the use of contractile contraction proteins like actin and myosin to pinch the cell literally into two separate entities. In plant cells, we have a little bit of a different story. Plant cells um, involve the use of vesicles. What they do is the vesicles um, that develop from the Golgi, vesicles from Golgi, are actually going to line up at the metaphase plate. So we'll say line up at metaphase plate. Once they line up at the metaphase plate, they actually coalesce. And what we mean by coalesce is that they combine together to create a cell plate. Once they've created a cell plate, that's then going to allow the vesicle membranes, specific vesicle membranes that were coalesced into one, set, one, let's say, large entity, that's a cell plate. The vesicle of that cell plate, let's say, um, the membrane specifically, fuses into the cytoplasm, or the um, cell membrane, excuse me, fuses into the cell membrane. Once we have this fusion event, you're actually going to now have the process of materials in the vesicle, materials that were within the vesicle created from the Golgi, materials within vesicle create a new cell wall entirely. And once we've created a new cell wall, we've automatically created a new cell altogether. So that's how plants do cytokinesis. Animal cells are a little bit different. They undergo the process of cleavaging, and cleavaging is another way to say animal cell cytokinesis. And we understand that it's through the idea of a contractile ring forming by developing a cleavage furrow. Overall, we've now completed the cell cycle in its entirety. We went through interphase, we went through the M phase, we went through mitosis specifically, and then now we've completed cytokinesis. Overall, we have a better understanding of the cell cycle and sort of the complexities that are seen within it. We have one more flowchart to finish off this um, lecture with, and it's called binary fission. We'll get into that next, but overall, hopefully you have a better idea of the cell cycle itself, how it cycles over and over and over again, and how mitosis and cytokinesis are the final 10% steps that help it sort of completely separate into two separate but identical cells.